Hello my creative friends, welcome to Rain Francis Art. My name is Rain. Today's real-time video tutorial is a drawing of Tim Allen as the Santa Claus. I drew Tim Allen with white and black charcoal pencils on black art paper. I chose to draw this portrait today because the theme for my Thursday art date today is Santa's workshop. And I thought how fitting because I love that movie too. I love the Santa Claus. I think Tim Allen is just so funny in it. If you'd like to join along in the description below, I've left a link to the stencil that I created that you can download, as well as a list of the supplies that I used. If you'd like to join along on my art date, please visit my blog at rainfrancisart.com. I would love to see your artwork there. So without further ado, here's the video. I hope that you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Let's draw Tim Allen as a Santa Claus. All right, the supplies I'm using, I have black art paper here. I've got black charcoal pencil, HB, 2B, 4B, and 6B. I've got white charcoal pencil, and I've got some chalk, white chalk pencils. For blending, I have various blending stumps and tortillon blenders. I have these for the white and these for the black. If you can, always keep them separate so you don't get the white ones dirty. And I've got some cotton swabs for blending, as well as a piece of wax paper just to rest my hand on so that I don't smudge everything and get charcoal all over me. All right, let's begin. I'm going to start with my chalk pencil. And I'm looking at my reference photo right now. I think it's very important to always have a reference photo in front of you. It helps you to figure out your shades and your values. So the areas that are really, really white are his beard and his hair and his eyeballs. Other than that, his skin is what we would call a mid-tone. So I'm going to use the chalk pencil and I'm going to blend, I'm going to apply mid-tone on his face. And I'm using circles. And I've said this in previous videos, chalk is very forgiving. If you accidentally draw a line, you can blend it out with a cotton swab. I really like these chalk pencils. The brand is Real Slate. The only thing I'm not crazy about when it comes to these is that they dull pretty fast and I have to continually sharpen them. So like I said, I'm just looking at my reference photo and I'm applying this chalk anywhere I see a mid-tone. I'm probably going to be using three or four values in this drawing. And by values, I guess I mean shades of black, white, and gray. And this is just really a base layer. We're nowhere near doing details yet. I'll come in, down and do his, uh, his jacket later. So let me just start by blending that. You're gonna see how nicely it blends with the, the cotton swab. just got the base there. I'm going to take my white right now. Actually, I've, I've transferred my stencil with white graphite paper. It's white graphite transfer paper. And I don't want to get any, get any on me or smudge because it is, it's not dry. You know, it, it is like applying charcoal. So I want to make sure I don't smudge here. But I'm going to go in and I'm going to start with the whites of his eyes so that we don't lose that area. I want to make sure I don't lose the very white, small, detailed areas. All right, here too.
And then there's a little area around his nose here that's very white because the light's coming in from here on the photo that I found online. And this area of his nostril above his nostril is very white as well. We're going to be coming in later and really doing a lot of white around his hair. But for now that'll be fine and I'm going to leave it just as is. I'm going to grab my HB black charcoal pencil and start putting in some light gray areas. This whole area is in the shade here of his face. So I'm going to shade all that in with HB. And I do stop once in a while to look at my reference photo to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. I'm trying to make it look realistic. Yeah, this whole area here is dark. Don't forget to turn your pencil once in a while so that you don't have to continually sharpen it and it doesn't wear down on one side. And for those of you following along, I color code my pencils just to make it easier. Green is HB, pink is 2B, yellow is 4B, and blue is 6B, which is the darkest. I watch the Santa Claus every year around the holidays. I think it's one of the greatest, um, I wouldn't say kids movies because adults enjoy it too. Tim Allen is very funny. I loved watching Home Alone, not Home Alone, uh, Home Improvement, his TV show. spot here that's dark and under his nose here is dark as well and he's got an area here that's quite dark I might use another color another shade for that I'm going to grab my 2B and go in and fill in some darker areas His nose is shaded. I've applied the, um, the chalk, but I think I'm going to take my HB again and put in a little darker area here. But I'm applying it very lightly, not as dark as I did here. his eye that's just a little dark. I'm going to take my darkest pencil, which is my 6B, and fill in his, his pupils here.
That's really the darkest area. I might not use my 6B for much more, maybe part of his jacket, but really, not really much more than that. Okay, so next up, I think we're going to start applying the white. His hair, it's very, very white. So I'm actually going to open this up and apply a lot of white here. I might speed it, this part up for you because it might get a little long because I'm applying a lot of white and I'm doing it in circles. Okay, so I've applied all the white. I'm going to apply a little bit more chalk to these areas here that have no medium. Because this part of his hair is still white, but it's in the shadow, so I want it to be just a little bit on the white side rather than a dark black or dark shade. This area here is actually the trim around his jacket, the furry, you know, the furry trim. I'm going to take my white again, and I'm just going to lightly add some shading here. I'm not pressing as hard as I was for this whole area here that's very, very white. And as I was shading, you may have noticed that I, I put in a few directional lines like this because when I come back and finish up the detailing I want to make sure that I don't lose that so back to the chalk actually I could go a little further here with that furry trim on his hood I guess it is at this point And I'm coming down a little bit on his jacket. There's some areas here that didn't get any chalk. I'm just going in and filling in all the blanks.
Okay, I'm grabbing my HB right now. I'm going to put in a little bit of shading here on his jacket, where the creases are. And at the same time, as you can see, I'm erasing my um, stencil lines here. Jack just jumped down. <laughs> now he's going to go drink water. It's really cold out here. The sun's out, which is really nice. My, um, my little studio back here is at the back of the house, and I get a lot of sun here. When, when I bought the house, they called this the sunroom. And it definitely is the sunroom. It helps a lot in the winter months. Okay, I'm going to start blending now. I'm going to grab a cotton swab and start with, I think I've, yeah, I've already blended this chalk here, but I'm going to go over it again. Cotton swabs don't really blend chalk uh, charcoal very well. I mean, it's okay, but it's not great. I prefer to use blending stumps for the, the white charcoal. But for the chalk and the, and the black charcoal, it works great. I'm just being careful not to get the black done yet until I get all the chalk blended. Oh, hi, Jack. You come to see me? Why don't you go lie down? You're such a good boy. He came right to see me. <laughs> to show me that he drank his water. My dogs are so sweet. <laughs> I can't imagine a home without pets, especially dogs. Right, I've got all that blended, so I'm gonna I'm gonna use my same cotton swab and I'm gonna go over the HB and 2B areas. And at the same time I'm kind of going outside the line to try to blend them well, but I'll I'll come back and fix all that up if I need to after. You have to turn your cotton swab once in a while. Otherwise it gets worn down and it could actually rip your paper if you press too hard which you shouldn't be anyway. <laughs> That's one thing I learned as I started to uh, perfect my technique, I guess, which is always a work in progress because there's no perfection here. Um, I, I used to press way too hard. And it didn't make the drawing fun to do because my hand used to really hurt. Grab another cotton swab just to do this area here on his jacket and blend it all in. Okay. Now I've, I've got my blending stumps for my whites and I'm gonna use the big blending stump here. And I'm gonna go in and blend all of this white here. I'll time lapse this part.
Okay, we've got all that blended, so I'm gonna grab, let's see. I'm going to grab a little tortillon blender. These are tortillon blenders here. They're just a little pointier and tougher than the blending stumps, and I use them for smaller areas such as the eyes. I use them where I want to keep the detail. Okay, that's good. Once in a while you want to wipe off your blenders because the, the medium buildup makes them dull and it doesn't, they don't blend too well if they're filled with medium. Okay, I'm going to do a second layer of chalk on his face. I want to get the face details done. He doesn't have much face showing because he has so much air. Okay, just a little um, cotton swab to blend that. And I'm, I'm going into the hairline right now because I'm trying to blend it nicely. I'm actually going even into the dark area. So now I'm going to work on his forehead. Actually what I'm going to do is try to blend in the dark with the lighter shades here. Just so it's not looking like, you know, a big blob of black. his forehead. I'm going to grab my HB, which is my lightest and the hardest of the dark charcoals that I own, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in his wrinkle lines. He's got some over his nose as well. under his eyes. This area, I'm grabbing my 2B because the area beside his nose is very, very dark. It's really in the shadow here. And when you put in a little darker shading next to another black, it makes it stand out a little better. I'm going to blend that in right away, all of those lines. Okay. I'm still working on the forehead. I've got my HB again. He's got dark areas on his forehead. Just, I'm pressing very, very lightly. I'm just looking at my reference photo and I'm noticing he's got little dark areas kind of all over his forehead. These lines I want to stand out a little more. And also on his cheek a little bit. There's just a little dark spot there. And we can't forget about his mouth. 
it's hidden mostly by the by the mustache and the beard but he's got a lip showing here okay another cotton swab here just to blend those in or blend those out whichever way you say it <laughs> broken cotton swab there. Okay. I'm going to take my white charcoal and give his lip just a little bit of detail there. And another cotton swab just to blend that with the black. Just to make it look like it's a lip. I think his lip is done. His forehead's okay. I have to work on his eyes. I'm going to take my 6B, my darkest one, and I'm going over the eye with that. He's got eyebrows, big eyebrows coming out. And we're going to work in the white after too on the eyebrows. Okay, this area again is very dark. I'm putting another layer on. And up here he's got his eyebrows too. You know, those big unkept eyebrows. <laughs> and I'm going to outline his eyes. And I'm going to make his pupil line a little straighter there on both eyes. I think that's starting to look like Tim Allen. <laughs> A little darkness here. And I'm going to grab the HB again because on his nose, he's got a little spot there. And I'm going to grab my white charcoal and very, very lightly apply a little bit of white charcoal here. It's lighter than the rest of his nose, than, yeah, the rest of his nose, but it's, it's not as bright as his eyeball. And I didn't think the chalk would cut it, but I'm going to make this line here a little whiter. There we go. So with my cotton swab, I'm just going to go over the eyebrow area. and everywhere that I applied the dark charcoal except for I'm gonna grab my a tortillon for around his eyes because the cotton swab might you know kind of destroy the detail that I put in blowing it now because I don't have any cats on my desk and the dogs are all on my bed so <laughs> lazy dogs I'm gently blending in the white with a cotton swab all right and this black area I forgot to blend right here I'm going to take my HB to erase a few lines, just a few. All right, cotton swab again, blend. 
right, now I'm going to grab my white charcoal and put in those bushy eyebrows. Same thing on this side here. I'm going to take a clean cotton swab and very gently go over because I want to keep the keep it looking like bushy hairy eyebrows. Okay. Oh wow, that's looking pretty good. <laughs> All right. So next, his lips okay. I think his eyes are good. I'm going to see if I want to put a little twinkle in his eyes here. I might erase it. But I usually like to put a little twinkle in their eye and go over it very gently. Yeah, I think this one's in the wrong spot. Erase that. I'll erase it with the 6B because that's what I applied it with. Okay. Now, where is that twinkle? Is it here? Yep, yeah, there it is. <laughs> All right, just blotting it. Okay, he's got the twinkle in his eyes. Now I think what we can do is start working on his hair. And for that, I'm using my HB because we have a base of white. And I wanna go over some areas to give it texture. Now his hair on this side here, actually, you know what? Putting a little more chalk here. along his hairline. Okay, it goes all the way down here. And this is his kind of his beard line here. And I'll just blend that quickly with a cotton swab. And I'm blending it into the dark area. the HB we're following the direction of his hair so the hair here goes this way so I'm just putting in a few lines to show that it's going this way and then once we get to this area here it's kind of switching positions that's probably where the part of his hair is I'm just looking at my reference photo and as you can see, I put in these lines here to help me out, to make me remember which way his hair is flowing. Because this whole area here, though it doesn't look it, it's part of his hair. too it's very bright but he's got a few longer hairs coming down here I just want to make it obvious that it's his hair okay now the white charcoal and I'm going to do the same thing And here, I, you can't see it, but I'm looking at the reference photo. I wish I could show the reference photo, but 
you know, there might be copyright issues. He has some hairs. It's not, he doesn't have like a block of hair. He's got some flyaways going on, you know. That's why we're putting the white here. Makes it look a little more realistic. Except for I'm being careful here. In this area here, where his hair is in the shadow, I'm not going to put any white. I just noticed part of his hood, I guess, goes over his hairline. And this is very white in the reference photo. I'm just filling in the fur on his collar. And then the beard takes over here, so let's just put all the fur here. Hope it's fake fur. <laughs> Probably is. Hollywood. This is all part of his jacket here. I'm going to take uh, the HB again and just draw in a few more areas. Very, very few. Especially down here. On the hairline where he was in the shadow. Because I do want it to look like his hair. Gonna grab a cotton swab. I'm not gonna touch the hair anymore, but I am gonna very lightly blend in the faux fur <laughs> fringe on his jacket and hood. Because I want to see the lines a little bit. Now we can work on this area, whole area here of his beard. I'm just going to put myself a little reference line here. This is all white. There's really no, no shading like this in his hair. Over here we can start putting in some HB because it's more in the shadow. And this part of his, his mustache as well. It's very, very white, so. But then it starts to curl a little here. And his beard starts to come out down here. of hair coming out here too. But it's really, it's really just, there's not much detail actually. I'm just going to fill all this again with another layer of white. Because there's really not much detail at all. It's so much in the light that it looks like one big ball of hair. even uh, below his lip here. And 
And here we start to see a little bit of beard. And like I said, he's got some hairs hanging out. I like the look of a little texture in this part of his beard, so I'm not going to use the blending stump because that will take away the texture. I'm going to keep using my cotton swab for blending his beard and his mustache. And Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go in a little bit on his hair. Just a very, very little bit. I want all those strands to show, but I want to soften it up just a little, little bit. Okay. I'm not pressing hard at all. Because I want that, that nice texture to show that it's it's not just, you know, a blob of white there, it's, it's his beard. And even though it's in the direct light here, and it looks on the reference photo like a big blob of white, I want it to look a little bit more like hair. to look like a beard. <laughs> I love doing these charcoal drawings. They're so much fun. All right. Now, this part of his beard here has a lot more texture, so I'm going to grab my HB just like I did with his hair. But his beard here it's, he's got kind of longer strands, because it's supposed to be a long beard, right? And they're curly, they're not kind of straight like his hair. I'm going to be blending all this in. This area too has a little darkness in it. And so does this part of his mustache here. Just on the side. Okay, that's good. blend this a little bit. Now let's grab our the uh, white charcoal again. As you can see, I really use these up as best I can. I hate buying, I hate spending money on new supplies. I mean, sometimes it's fun, but you know, we're all in a budget these days, so I'm using everything until the last possible moment. I will use it if it's this big. <laughs> I got a big surprise bill from the uh, power company here who miscalculated a few things for... I'm on an equalized payment program with my power company because I find it easier for budgeting purposes to have the same amount to pay every month, you know? Because I use a lot less power in the summer. I'm just going to blend that. And um, 
you know, some of my monthly bills in the summer could be less than $100. And then, you know, in mid-January, because of all the heat that I use, I could have a bill for $600. So I just, I asked them to put me on an equalized payment plan. And they kind of messed it up a little bit. And I got a huge bill that nearly made me faint. But I took a payment arrangement with them. My gosh. And that'll be paid off by June, but what a unbelievable surprise that was. So yeah, if I have to <laughs> use this until it's like half an inch, if I can still sharpen it, I'm using it. I'm using my 2B here very lightly. Put in a few little areas of shading here. And I'll blend that in. Okay, now I want to take my white charcoal again and make a few little wisps down here. I'm going to do the same with the HB. When I bought this house uh, back in uh, almost two years ago now, I moved here a year and a half ago. Um, I do have a wood stove here, but it's not up to code, so I can't use it. And one of the big plans I have for this summer is to make sure that that wood stove is up to code so that I can use it to heat my home because I need to save money on that, you know. White charcoal just going over that area again a little bit in some areas. I'm really looking forward to using wood because I have so much deadfall on my property. I have um, just under two acres of birch wood and I do really have a lot of wood that I could be using to burn so I'm gonna get that going in the summer so that by this time next year I'll be nice and cozy by the fire <laughs> I'm just blending that all in here and I think that's gonna look nice Now I'm going to just finish off by working on his jacket. If I look at the reference photo, there are some areas that are very light, so I'll use my charcoal pencil and I'm just going to really go very lightly. Just some areas. Under where I shaded before. spot in there. And now for the dark 6B. The rest of his jacket is very dark. I mean, one of my favorite scenes in this movie, The Santa Claus, was <laughs> When he's at the doctor's office and he grabs his uh, his belly and he shakes it and it makes like a kind of liquid noise. 
It's just so funny. He's so funny. He's a good comedian. Uh, one of the uh, supporting actors was Judge Reinhold. He played the stepdad, I guess. And he was really funny in that. He, For those of you who are Seinfeld fans, you'll remember him as the close talker. And that was one of my favorite Seinfeld episodes with Judge Reinhold. They did um, sort of a parody on Schindler's List at that point. And I guess they made it funny somehow. Okay, over here we've got Dark Area 2. All right, another cut swab, just to blend all that in. This was a fun, uh, a fun one to do for the holidays. Yeah, I'm running, running through these cotton swabs a little too quickly here. You know why? Because I bought the cheap brand. <laughs> They're not as puffy as the most famous brand. I don't promote brands on my channel, <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. The only word that comes to mind when you get a Q and a U and you're playing Scrabble, that's the only word that comes to my mind, Q-tip. <laughs> okay, I've got a little dollar store flat paintbrush here, I'm just going over that soften it up. Alright, and this area I'll soften up a little bit too. That's it, my friends. I think that looks pretty good. I hope that you enjoyed this, and I hope that you, you joined along. If there's any character, celebrity, animal, anything like that that you want me to draw for you or show you how to draw, please let me know in the comments below. I love reading comments, and I do reply to them. I love our little community of people. Everyone is so sweet. Thanks so much for watching, my friends. I'll see you next time. Bye.